special at Friendly's. <laughs> <sighs> Turning 60 is part of the thing that prompted me to try stand-up. Right. Either right. this or skydive, jump out of an airplane, celebrate. Figured I'd try the thing that didn't e rely on a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> you get to a certain age, nobody cares what you do anymore anyway, so it doesn't matter. Best thing about trying comedy at 60 is that there's only 25 years left for humiliation. <laughs> so when you start bitching about being 60, somebody invariably says, consider the alternative. Yes. So what, I only get two choices, this or death? <laughs> if you want me to consider an alternative, how about the one where my knees still bend and my boobs aren't reaching down to help? <laughs> How about the one where I don't need a chip clip to hold my neck together? <laughs> dum -dum. It's all very dramatic. So a lot has changed. When I was a kid, my two favorite words were chocolate chip. By the time I went to college, my two favorite words were nickel bag. <laughs> Those of you from the 70s get that one. <laughs> so I get to be 40s, rolling rock. Now at 60, my two favorite words are comfort waistband. <laughs> That's what happens. <clears throat> so I love the Patriots. Watch the football games every weekend with a bunch of women friends. We really get into the games, but I suspect the running commentary might be a little bit different than what you have going at your house. For instance, at my house, there's a lot of talk about whose ass looks mighty fine in the baby And whose doesn't? Will Fork. We wonder aloud why Belichick's wife does not dress him better. We finally got one person to stop referring to the team uniform as their outfit. <laughs> We're learning. I really do understand football, but I'm a little confused about this fantasy football thing. Some of you might have had a fantasy team this year. And if you did, you most likely had Rob Gronkowski on your team. You're probably thinking about touchdowns, interceptions, yardage. And the guy is pretty much like a big old dopey golden retriever who'll do just about anything to catch a ball. Catch the ball, Rob. Bring it back. Bring it back. Good boy. Well, I do have a fantasy team, and Gronkowski is on it, but here's what I'm thinking. I wonder what he looks like naked. <laughs> I'm sure it's a beautiful thing. <sighs> See, I get distracted there. <laughs> what position do I want Rob to play? <laughs> Where on the field is Rob really going to do his best work? <laughs> I love dogs. <laughs> Some of you know this about me. I have a rather unusual profession. I make a living reading tarot cards. <laughs> when I say that out loud to people for the first time, it always sounds like a confession at a 12-step meeting. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Jean. I'm a tarot reader. I know people really don't get tarot. I know somebody's kind of clueless when they come up to me and say, so what exactly is tarot? 
yeah. When it sounds like carrot rhymes with carrot, I know I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Don't deny it. Martha, she looks so normal. <laughs> I am normal. I'm as normal as anybody in this room, I'll guarantee it. <laughs> but Tara does have its stereotypes. <laughs> You feel better now, don't you? <laughs> I know you do. But are you now secretly afraid I'm going to read your mind? <laughs> yeah. You. Look out for the red-haired cashier at Hannaford. <laughs> and you. You give me $600, and I will remove the curse that has been placed upon you. <laughs> By me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not what it's about. The tarot reader's secret handshake requires that we use our powers for good instead of evil. <laughs> but still, people are always asking me, can you give me the lottery numbers? Honey, do you think if I knew the lottery numbers that I'd be standing here at 25 degree Portland, Maine? <laughs> no, there'd be two new favorite words, cabana boy. <laughs> Well, you can relate to that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and people assume, too, that the information that comes in a reading comes from kind of like those spotlights, like this magical, mystical, whole megaphone in the sky, and that the fates have spoken. So if you're the client, you're either good to go or you're totally screwed. Yeah. Tarot does not work on guaranteeing outcomes. If you need a guarantee, buy a toaster. <laughs> we are a kindly bunch, but even the gentlest reader occasionally is compelled to fuck with a client who's being an idiot. <laughs> I once had somebody come in and say, so, how many children do I have? I was like, you don't know? <laughs> So a couple of weeks ago, I went to a comedy club and I got heckled by the person on stage. <laughs> Absolutely true. She pointed right at me. What are you doing in here? Did knitting class get out early? <laughs> it's okay. She had, she had a point. I looked around. Everybody else in there was about 30, dressed in black. <laughs> We king of ennui. <laughs> and I didn't mind so much that she called me out. I did mind in her bit that she seemed to think simply by saying the word vagina once that we would all laugh, which we did once. But there was so much left on the table there. Come on, there's so much to work with. Yeah, yeah. For instance, I recently heard it referred to as the female vagina. <laughs> Apparently, in contrast to the male vagina. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I went up to her afterwards, put my arm around her in a motherly fashion, and encouraged her to take her vagina ball and run with it. <laughs> because it is so much bigger than just that. Honey, this thing is your happy valley. <laughs> this thing's a tourist trap. <laughs> Did you know that you could get a lot of cool stuff with one of these? <laughs> <laughs> this here's your PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> oh, knitter my ass. <laughs> I still may need to jump out of the airplane, but you guys have been great. I'm Jean Theory, and thanks.